So after reading the problem, as we'll simply read, it says that we are given a grid called as row comma column. And then if a grid is one, that is a land. If a grid is zero, that is a water. And usually these kind of problems, okay, okay a grid is a one, that's a land. If it's a zero, that's a water. So that we have usually seen that uh, we just traverse and find the number of islands and stuff. Okay, if you had not seen, then you can just go and you have not followed the bar graph series or you have not watched the island problem. Now, it simply says that the grid cells are connected by horizontally and vertically, not diagonally, which means as you can see, these cells are connected, these are connected, as in I can move from any land cell to any this land cell. This is from where I will move. The grid is completely surrounded by water, as you can see, uh, my, water, my water outflows. So for sure, I can easily say that after this land, there will be a water for sure. So at the borders, at the borders also, after that, I will have a water. That's a very, very big point because that will actually help us to solve the problem later on. Now, there is exactly one land that is one island that is one or more connected lands. As you can also see, they have specifically mentioned that they will have only one connected component. As you remembered, like land is just a connected component because we have already seen that we traverse on this land one by one as where we can go. Right? So that's the reason we know that it is a kind of a graph problem. It can be kind of a graph problem with this land as one connected component. Now, the land does not have lakes, which means there will not be water inside this land. So that is obviously for sure for us, uh, which means that is it inside isn't connected to water around the lands. One cell is a square with side of length one. And they have just told that the grid length rectangular with, uh, okay, all that stuff. So ultimately our main crux is that I have to simply traverse on this island, right? And I know that is only one island. As I'm traversing on this island, I will make sure, okay, if I, as I traverse on every cell, because for sure to traverse on this island, I have to traverse on every cell. As I traverse on, let's say some specific cell, this, I will check it's up left down and bottom if up is either again as you can see this is the topmost cell right so for this cell if i do a r comma c which is row comma column for this cell the row is zero so the up will not be there ideally if i go and query for grid of r minus one comma c right r minus one comma c then r minus one which is a zero minus one will actually give me a runtime exception runtime error so i cannot do a r minus c so i will just simply put a condition that if my r is zero then for sure at the up i will have one one of my uh you know water and okay what if not what if not which means what if if this is this specific cell r comma c then for sure this is not a row of zero this is a row of one this is a row of zero so in row of one, I will actually have to go and check if his up is a water or not. So for any other rows, I will have to check. Okay. If the grid of R minus one comma C, if that is a water, then I can simply say that, okay, at the up, at the up, I will have, I will have a water. As you can see in this case, if I do, a, if this is, let's say if this is R comma C, if I do a up, it will be a one, which is not equal to my zero. So, this, so my up, as in this up represents, okay, at the up cell, at the up location to be more precise, do I have a water or not? Right, okay. So as you can see for up, I did like this. Now I'm just simply saying I'm traversing this entire, I'm traversing this entire uh, my island. And again, traversal, we simply know this traversal, as soon as the traversal word comes in, we can simply traverse anything by a simple BFS or a simple DFS. And if you're just confused how this traversal looks like, I will highly, highly, highly recommend just go and watch this problem of lecture 12 of a bar graph series. You will simply get it. Or if you want, you can simply solve this problem also. So we realize that the same way that we did for the top row, as in for the up, for the up we do, like we can do the same for down and we can do the same for our left. And we can do the same for our right. That again, how the right will look like? Right will simply again, if I have a cell, let's say R comma C, my right cell is R comma C plus one. So I will simply go and check, okay, if 
firstly my this column is actually equal to my again this column is let's say j again i should iterate on i and j and i will keep the actual array size as 0 comma r minus 1 comma c minus 1 let's keep it like this to be more precise so i'll simply i'll check okay if this j actually j is equals to my m minus 1 then for sure i cannot go right so i can simply say that my right will for sure be a water okay if not if i can go actually so i will just simply check okay if that current cell i comma j plus 1 j plus 1 i, I can go to the right so i'll check for j, j plus 1 if that is a water then i'm good then i should say that at my right location i will have a water this will give me one and one will say okay at right i have water and the same way i will do for down sorry yeah it is up so i'll do the same for down for right i'll do the, do the same for left now you will see what is the time complexity as you are doing a simple dfs traversal or a simple bfs traversal you know the time will be nothing but o of n into m and everything just and everything is just a o of one operation for every cell i am doing this operation these four operations so it's just a o of one operation but the space as you're doing a dfs or a bfs the space in worst case can also be o of n into m now that's an issue or oh, like not, not, not exactly an issue but yeah that is the case right now i'll ask you can you improvise it then uh, you might start thinking rn there is no way to improvise it because you will use either a bfs or a dfs for traversal because you have to traverse this entire graph but i'll say um wasn't they even mentioning what is happening in this entire like they have given you a few very concrete points that there is no lake inside okay which means this entire thing if i make this entire thing no matter whatsoever it is it will always 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 be connected like this as in there's no lake inside so i can simply and very easily i can simply say okay if i'm if i'm starting in from here i will for sure find a land and then if i find a land here okay i'm done okay and also they mentioned that there's exactly one island so the same issue that which dfs would have solved me that let's say if i make again a very big island and if i would have mentioned okay let's say if i would have an island here 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 and then i have another water here so let's say here's the land so this issue is will not be there and also okay what if i have another island this issue will also not be there but Aaron, like what was the issue with this all that stuff because see if you would have dfs so you would have known that you have to traverse on all these cells internally Okay, I'll traverse on all these cells internally. Right. Okay, I'll go on to all these cells. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I'm only concerned about for a specific cell. For a specific cell. Again, I'm concerned about only for a specific cell. For that, what is up, left, right, and down. Right, right, right. That's it. Like, even if I go on, let's say, this cell. Right. Even if I go on to this cell. I can easily still make sure that okay what is up right left and down again it will contribute to a zero i just wanted the i just wanted the get the cells that are horizontally what you get it what is the grid determine the perimeter of the island i have to just find the perimeter which means i just have to find out for every cell what is up left right and if up left right i have water i will simply count a one 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 for it same way for this cell i have to count a one 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 for it so the issue would have been because i have to count the perimeter so this this ideally would also have contributed to a perimeter internally right but i am saying okay i will not imagine that i have inside lake also i will not count that so okay it's very easy for me to not count the inside perimeter i have to only count the outside perimeter so that's the reason like okay i am very sorted in this case that uh, my i don't have to write some edge cases here because i don't have any inside perimeter and the same way okay I, if i would have traversed here 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 then uh, i can again even if i would have multiple islands i, I could have again uh, done and counted the perimeter itself but it should also be complete perimeter like complete island so i realized okay the inside perimeter was only the bottleneck for me for my example which i have written and again if still i could have handled that with an edge case also 
but still like traversing a graph via simple bfs or dfs is it actually again required i'm asking you again i'll say no because what why can't you simply traverse this graph from cell by cell if i traverse okay from this cell okay this cell then i will traverse okay let's say this cell this cell i'll ask left right okay up left right and down okay and the same way i will count okay up is water left is water right is water down is not water so he will have a contribution of three and as you can see one two and three the contribution same way for let's say this cell up left and down okay a contribution of three added one two and three same way for this cell up left and down and right no contribution added for this up right and down okay contribution of three added as you can see okay for this up down no left right yes so contribution of two added so you can see easily that whenever i am having a land and i check for its up left down right and down i will simply add the contribution and that's the only point i will simply rather than doing a defense or BFS, i will simply traverse this entire grid and then on every cell i'll check for up left right and down that's it so let's see the code it's pretty 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 simple again we saw that we'll check only when we have a land for that specific land what is his up left right and down so firstly i initialized my row and column defining okay what is the row and column size i have then i went on iterate and simply did an, did an iteration on all the cells of this specific grid and if a grid is a land i will check for its up left right sorry down and right and as i showed you for up you will check okay if it's a row zero then for sure it's up will always be a water if not then i'll check if it's up which is a grid r minus one comma c if it's a zero then it's a water then i will simply say up will be one and same way i'll check for left right left down right and up when this is done i will check okay if up had a water left had a water right had a water down had a water if anyone has a water that value will be one right and same way i'll add my answer saying it's a perimeter for me and thus i'll get my answer thus you can simply see my time will still be of n into m because i would need to have iterate on all the cells but my space is just open because i did not use any extra space here just four variables that's it and that's how you, again that's a disguise of bfs or dfs again you can simply solve it by B, via a bfs or dfs but i'll say okay it's just a disguise because the actual use case can be simply a iteration on all the cells cool i hope you guys got it again it's easy but it's kind of a disguise so it's a medium i should think of that yeah that how you can solve it bye bye take care